Hey guys, James here, back with another video, and today I have a little quick look at this product. This is the TP-Link TLWA901ND. It's essentially a wireless access point, but it can function as quite a few different things. So uh, I'll talk about what those are a bit later, but some of the things on the box, you can see it's got easy networking expansion with essentially wireless and 450 Wi-Fi. You have three 5 dBi antennas, that's essentially just, that's the specification of the antenna. You have the option for passive power over ethernet, um, which is pretty handy as well. 450 megabits per second on 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi. You can see at the back, these are some of the little things that it can do, but we'll get into that later. And it comes with a standard three year warranty with 24 hour, uh, seven day a week support. Let's open this up and see what we get. Now, um, I actually think that this is probably the most popular, I think, um, well, at least in Melbourne, uh, for wireless access points that uh, is affordable, essentially. Um, there are definitely wireless access points out there. Probably the biggest brand out there is Ubiquiti. However, um, in terms of affordability and just cost, um, Ubiquiti is quite expensive. So I bought this wireless access point for only $54 Australian. Um, and this gives you a wireless access point, which is fantastic. You think about Ubiquiti, you're spending at least $200 just for the, um, for the access point. And you know, to manage that, you have to set up a laptop separately or you have to buy one of those controllers. So it's just a bit annoying. So I figured cheap option with, you know, with this, I can buy four access points versus one of the ubiquities. And if you have, you know, a small enough office or kind of home network, then it's it's not too bad. Um, you're not going to run into too many problems unless you're really about performance, like you're doing a lot of networking. But if you're just trying to get internet to areas of the house um, where you have wired networking, but you just don't have the wireless capability, then this is going to be a great thing for you. But let's get into the unboxing standard power cord. We also have the uh, access point itself. You have the three antennas, ethernet cable, as well as the passive PoE injector. So let's go through one by one. Essentially, this is a standard ethernet cable. This is a Cat5E. Yep, you can see here Cat5. It doesn't specify E, but it is E, I'm assuming. Um, you have your passive PoE injector. So instead of, let's just say you wanted to mount this like on the wall or something like up here, but you don't have any power on this area, but you can afford to run an ethernet port here, which you kind of have to anyway to make this work. Um, instead of having two cables, so one ugly power cable and an ugly ethernet cable, you just have the ugly ethernet cable. And then this runs into the uh, PoE. And then this other connection goes into your router or your switch, whatever you're using, and then you plug this normal power socket that you would normally plug into here, into this, and you only have one cable coming out. That's really, really cool, and it comes with it. Uh, for $54, whole package deal, that's pretty good. You have uh, just some documentation license again, which we don't need to see. Let's have a look at the access point itself. You have the on-off button, it's a switch, you can see there. You have your power port, you have your reset, uh, or WPS button. So WPS is essentially a smart way of connecting two devices together. I never use it because I think it's not secure. I never use it because I just find giving the password more secure than just pressing a button. I always disable that. You have your three antenna uh, connectors here and your ethernet port as well. No activity LED because all the activity LEDs are at the front here. You've got this kind of digital uh, camo <laughs> but it's a design essentially allows for ventilation. Um, there are holes um, in the chassis, as you can see. You have your power uh, LED, you have your ethernet LED, your Wi-Fi LED, and your lock and W, or this is essentially your WPS LED as well. Uh, wall mounting sockets here, they don't come with screws, unfortunately. These feet are plastic, not rubber, which is annoying as well. They should have come with rubber. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't do that. You have your power settings, your log on, uh, this is how you set it up and I'll go through that and you have your standard username password and stuff like that So I wouldn't wall mount this before you set it up set it up first and then wall mount it because you're gonna need some of the information Behind such as you know the MAC address if you're gonna set permanent IPs and stuff like that. Yeah in your router So this is the SSID 
that you're gonna find here and the wireless password here. You need these. Um, unique, obviously it's blurred out, but these are unique to your device. They're not the same for all the devices that they sell. They are unique things, so keep that in mind. And you can see here the model number um, briefly over there. And your model number and serial number is in this top section here. So let's quickly uh, set this up. All you have to do is just screw these on. Okay, rotate this up, rotate this up, and rotate this up. And this is essentially uh, your wireless access point. It's pretty small, um, but it does have a pretty decent range. I'm just gonna leave it sitting there while we look at other things. So again, this is the power adapter. I lost the word. Um, you can see here, it's got TP-Link logo branding on it, and that's the power stuff in case you need to ever find a replacement. Here we have a quick installation guide. This is quite helpful. Um, and essentially it goes through all the different modes that this wireless exit point can do. So see at the top, we have all of these different modes. Um, they kind of don't really explain things in a way that is easy to understand. For those people who are smart, yes, you can understand that. But for me, I don't. So I like to use pictures. All right, so with the first one, we have the access point mode. And that is the default mode for this uh, device this access point. Essentially what an access point does, you have your internet and then you have your wired router or mode, well first you have your modem and then you have a router which kind of assigns all the devices IPs and then what, what you once you have done that you connect through wire to the access point and essentially allows you to broadcast to a network. So essentially a few ways you can apply this if you don't have a wireless router if you just have a normal router you can use one of these and stick it in and you're good to go. Now you don't have to use the SSID that comes with it. You can definitely configure it to whatever you want. You can set up your own password and stuff like that. That's easy enough. I'll probably do that in a separate video. I don't wanna make this video too long, um, but yeah, you can do that, all that customization, it's very easy. Or the other alternative is, for example, you already have a wireless router, but you're trying to get it into, you, you don't have wireless signal in, say like the other side of your house or the other side of your office or in different rooms in your house or your office. And so this allows you to, if you have an ethernet connection, um, allows you to have a strong wireless signal. Cause sometimes when you have like, for example, you have multiple repeaters, let's say, say you have, uh, you know, you have your router at your first room, but then you're repeating, 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 you're losing something um, as the further, the further along you go, right? So this essentially, if you have a, an ethernet connection, um, let's just say you run a cable or through the walls or whatever, you have an ethernet connection to the other side of the house or to another room, you can plug directly into this access point and it essentially broadcasts a direct Wi-Fi signal that's really, really strong um, in terms of internet and, and networking speeds and all that. So it's really, really great. So that's what I'll be using it for um, and that's what I've used it in my personal home as well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that. Number two, you have the range extender mode. So let's just say you already have a wireless modem router and you just wanna do what I said, you know, extend your range just using pure wireless. So you can do that. Um, essentially, you can choose to copy the exact same network, um, which I wouldn't recommend just because uh, your phone usually isn't smart enough or your device isn't smart enough to distinguish between these two unless they're very, very far apart. So what I found was when I try to do uh, this mode, um, it just didn't work because, or even with the access point copying the same ID, because yeah, I would be right next to my modem, uh, or I'll be right next to my original router, the, 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 the default router that came with uh, my ISP, and it still wouldn't uh, switch from the old one that I was connected to. So it was saying that I had a weak signal. So my advice is just create a separate um, SSID. Let's just call it like, you know, underscore extended. Um, or EXT, and that way you know you can manually select the one that you are closest to, that you know that you're closest to. I think that's the best for small office and stuff like that. If, if you've got a large, you know, singular office, then I probably wouldn't be using this. I'll probably use maybe a user ubiquity network. But if you've got, if you're a small office or you have separate rooms uh, that need wireless, then I would just create a separate SSID for those rooms. So for example, you could have office underscore meeting room one or office underscore meeting room two and stuff like that. Now these two are very, very similar in uh, design. However, it's essentially a bridge with an access point. So as I was saying, don't just copy the same SSID, 
you recreate your, your own SSID. So that's using this. The next mode we have is client mode. So let's just say you have an, a very old laptop or even a PC that doesn't have a wireless network card. So then you can essentially use this access point as a network card. So you just connect the ethernet directly into the computer or laptop that um, has an ethernet jack obviously, and you use that to get a signal from your router, which is pretty handy as well. It's, it's great because it's $54 has so much flexibility it's not just one thing. Back in the day, router like extenders just used to be extenders. You couldn't use them as access points or even you know use them as bridges, whatever. Now you have the ability to use whatever you want it to, to do, which is awesome. You have multi SSID mode. So for example, you can um, you know have two different SSIDs. That's a bit over my uh, kind of expertise, um, but you can do that if you understand what you're doing. PoE. So as I said, you know you can have a PoE injector. So your power is over here, but then you're uh, connecting the access point um, just by the ethernet and power goes through that ethernet cable, which is fantastic. So what I'm actually running at my church office at the moment is a hybrid. So I'm actually doing, um, it's, it's shown in the box, but it's not shown in the pictures. So what I'm doing is I'm actually doing this. I'm doing a range extender. So I'm getting a wireless signal. I'm actually using one of these in one room to as an access point. So I'm, I, I just call it, you know, a meeting room. And essentially a few like 30, 40 meters across um, through, a few, through a different building, I'm having one of these receive the signal. So essentially this one. So this one is like the original network. I'm receiving the signal. I'm rebroadcasting as a wireless signal as well as putting it into a local network, which is awesome so what i'm doing is because i have like a print like a local printer and i have all this stuff and um and i need it to get into a network and i don't i can't afford the router to be in the office which is a bit annoying but we're trying to fix that with proper cabling that's why i bought all these different switches and stuff like that but the goal is to you know i uh, just make this work temporarily so um, all of these access points will be converted to normal access points, but um, because of the flexibility, I managed to convert one into a range extender. So it's receiving a wireless signal, it's rebroadcasting that wireless signal, and at the same time, it's outputting um, the data through the ethernet port into a local network. So all my printers, all my other wired devices are using that bridge essentially to receive data, which is pretty awesome. Um, but it does cut the wireless performance in half. So let's just say if I was using directly into the desktop, I find that I get far better speeds than if I was to use this wireless signal um, rebroadcasted. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just the way it is. So always plugging in is much faster um, because it ha this has to do double work. But essentially when, when this does just turn into an access point, I hope that yeah, the, the performance will just be normal and very, very fast without having to, you know, having to receive and send signal at the same time, um, if that makes sense. Because it's trying to receive a proper signal and then send that out again. Whereas if, as an access point, you're just talking with different devices, just sending and receiving between the devices. You're not actually trying to receive an internet and local network signal. Yeah, if that makes sense. I, I, I'm not very good at explaining things, but that's how it works. Um, but it's great how you can have different modes and I just love that about this um, TP-Link access point. I think it um, does great performance, very, very affordable, especially for the home network. So again, this is it. Um, I, th I think it's great, very compact. It is a plastic design, it's not metal, no parts of metal really, um, but if you're just gonna leave it there, it's great. So for example, you could leave it, you know, against the wall, or if you wanted to be a bit more fancier, you could do something like that. Um, but yeah, you usually just, just stick it directly. So I'll be mounting two of these where my church is um, in two different rooms um, because they have a wide uh, port, which we'll get soon. But the thing which I hear a lot, especially in Australia, is that MBN is really bad. And that is true because when, when MBN rolled out the new connections, they were, people weren't able to put the connection in the original spot where their ADSL or cable connection was. And therefore the wireless performance was heavily affected. So. Um, besides MBN's connecting issues, this will help resolve some of the wireless coverage issues. So um, when we moved over to MBN um, at our home, uh, one of the things was, yeah, the modem, I don't like it. We had a Netgear CG uh, 3000 V2 modem, uh, cable modem router, and that was good. The wireless performance was great on that. 
but this is using the sage comm i hate the sage comms because you can't even bridge it um if you know what that means yeah you can't even bridge the uh you know get rid of the router and use your own router you have to use this which is really annoying especially if you want phone if you don't have phone you can just use your own router and it, it will work but if you want to use phone you have to use the optus provided sagecom modem router but essentially what this allowed me to do is just run a physical ethernet cable to the other side of the house i know it's a bit annoying not everyone can do that um, but yeah run a physical ethernet cable to the other side of the house plug it in uh, set this up with a new ssid and i called that like um, lounge and I set one up near my office and I called that one office um, because there's a dead zone in that house in that part of my house so um, again I think it's great it's very very affordable um, most people can afford this it's not that expensive it's not gonna break the bank um, and it's gonna provide you with a great way to extend your network and flexibility if that changes you know for example you don't need that anymore you upgraded your modem or router and let's just say you just wanted to as to use it as a repeater or a client whatever you want to do it's great it's great flexibility so this video has been quite long already so i'm not going to include the setup on this but um i will hopefully find time to do a video on that so definitely subscribe to see that when it comes out but i hope you like this video like it if you liked it dislike if you disliked it leave a comment below if you have any questions or any comments about this particular access point or anything else and i'll try and get around to answer those for you as soon as i can subscribe to see more videos like this especially the setup video hopefully coming up let me know if you do want to see that video because um, when you do put those comments in uh the more motivation i'll get to find the time to to do that video um, but yeah hope you guys liked it um, subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one